In this tutorial, I will explain how over-the-air activation and activation by personalization works. Before I start with this tutorial, please be aware of the following. The information provided in this tutorial is based on the LoRaWAN 1.0.2 specification. More information about the LoRaWAN 1.0.2 specification can be found at this location. All LoRaWAN specifications can be found at this location. The MCCI Arduino LMILT library has only been tested with LoRaWAN 1.0.2 networks. This is based on the code in October 2018 and has not implemented the LoRaWAN 1.1 new security features. An end device must first be activated before it is able to communicate with the network server. There are two methods to activate an end device in a LoRaWAN network. Over-the-air activation, also known as OTA, and activation by personalization, also known as ABP. Both methods will be explained next but please be aware that it is a simplified explanation. If you need a detailed explanation, please read the LoRaWAN 1.0.2 specification. OTA is the preferred activation method because it provides the most secure way to connect end devices to a network server. Before activation, end devices must know and store its dev AUI, app AUI, and app key. The network server must know and store the same app key. So an end device must store the dev AUI, app AUI, and app key, and the network server stores the app key. Both app keys are the same. AUI stands for Extended Unique Identifier, which is 64 bits long and is generally used for the identification of network components. The DEV AUI uniquely identifies the end device and is similar to a MAC address. Some devices are already shipped with a DEV AUI. For example, this LoRa development board has a built-in DEV AUI. And my self-built LoRa development board has no built-in DEV AUI. The app AUI uniquely identifies the application server and is similar to a port number. The app key is an AES, which stands for Advanced Encryption Standard, 128-bit symmetric key, also known as root key, and is used to generate the message integrity code to ensure the integrity of the message. Both enterprise and network server must store the same app key. The end device generates the def nonce, which is a randomly generated number to prevent rogue devices replaying the join request. The end device constructs a message containing the dev nonce, app AUI, and dev AUI. Over this message, the message integrity code is generated by the app key. Dev nonce, app AUI, and dev AUI are not encrypted by the app key. The end device can now activate itself by sending a join request message to the network server containing the dev nonce, app AUI, dev AUI, and message integrity code. After the network server receives the join request message, it will check if the dev nonce has not been used previously. The network server authenticates the end device with the message integrity code value. Because it has received the dev nonce app AUI and dev AUI, over this message it will use its own app key, which must be the same as this app key, and calculates its own message integrity code. If both message integrity codes are the same, then this end device is authenticated. If accepted, the following values are generated by the network server. The device address, the device address maps the dev AUI to a network internal shorter address, which is 32 bits long, in order to reduce the protocol overhead in transmitted frames. The device address is similar to a client IP address. The network server also generates the app nonce. The app nonce is a random generated number. And the network server also generates a network identifier. 
the network server constructs a message containing the device address, app nonce, network ID, and some network settings. These network settings are download settings, which are data rates to be used for receiving. Another network setting is the receive delay, which is the time between transmit and receive. And another network setting is the channel frequency list which are frequency settings for each channel. Over this message, the message integrity code is generated by the app key. The message itself is encrypted with the app key. The network server sends a join accept response back to the end device containing the encrypted message and the message integrity code. Now both the end device and network server share the same app nonce and dev nonce, as you can see over here. The end device and network server uses the app nonce and the dev nonce to generate two session keys, the network session key and the application session key. The network server sends the application session key and device address to the application server. The network session key is used by the end device and network server to calculate and verify the message integrity code of all data messages to ensure data integrity. The network session key is also used to encrypt and decrypt the payload. The application session key is used to secure end-to-end -end communications between the end device and the application server. The shared symmetric key is used by the application server and end device to encrypt and decrypt the payload. The payloads are end-to-end -end encrypted between the end device and the application server, but they are not integrity protected. That means a network server may be able to alter the content of the data messages in transit, but the network servers are considered as trusted. In the activation by personalization mode, there are no join requests or join accept messages sent. The end device does not store the dev AUI, app AUI, and app key. And the network server does not store the app key. Instead, the end device is preloaded with the device address, application session key, and network session key. The network server is preloaded with the device address and network session key. And the application server is preloaded with the device address and application session key. When an end device is trying to communicate with the network server, it will send the message directly. These messages are encrypted and signed. All LoRaWAN devices are forced to encrypt their payload and header with the Advanced Encryption Standard algorithm using 128-bit keys. The LoRaWAN protocol offers two layers of security. On the network layer, the integrity of a message is enforced by the message integrity code using the network session key. The payload is encrypted from end device to network server. On the application layer, the payload is encrypted using the application session key. The payload is encrypted from end device to application server. This means it is possible to have end to end encryption of the LoRa data. In October 2017, the LoRaWAN 1.1 specification is out with improved security. As mentioned earlier, the MCCI Arduino Elmic library does not implement the LoRaWAN 1.1 new security features. More information about LoRaWAN 1.1, see these webinars from the Things Network. The missing puzzle pieces of LoRaWAN security, see this YouTube video. And what is new in LoRaWAN 1.1? See this YouTube video. In the next tutorial, I will demonstrate the over-the-air activation method and the activation by personalization method using my self-built LoRa development board on the Things Network. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. If you have questions, leave your comments below. I'll do my best to answer them.